Hello everyone, and welcome to a reboot, a continuation. I guess, I guess a reboot would start at level one with a new cast. We have the most of the original cast, and because all their characters have been captured, they've made up brand new characters at second level to be, you know, to deal with what's going on. But who would unite them? First time the players were called upon by a stargazer. This time around, I'm going to say the party might prove to be a little bit more awkward, less heroic, and gathered by someone who believes he is a great judge of character and likely is not. So the scene comes down a little while later. It has been a week since Otari has slept, woke, gone about its day, slept again. All nervous eyes every day and especially every night are on the gaunt light which once shone and woke up an entire graveyard. The heroes of the grave, they have been called, the heroes of Otari, defending their town. Soon after, dealing with an incident of the undead, marched straight back into the ruins and have not been seen for several days. Now these people had managed to retrieve three of four rogues that had been missing, gaining some trust and a little extra cash from the female proprietor of the Crooks Nook, the Lady Thief Guild Runner herself of the Osprey Club. But these guys don't have the uh, Osprey tattoo. They are not her people. I'm not saying they're not her concern. The town has gone so far as to approach the swamp, but not enter the ruin. Hopefully, maybe they would find the party injured, passed out, camping. They've talked to the, to the druids up at the circle of the pond. They've kept a wary eye for several days, but no heroic party of three or less have emerged from the ruin. And it is finally one bardish gnome who goes by the name, lately, of Jargon Whitmore, who takes upon himself to organize a rescue party to find the heroes of Otari. He had recently profiled each member, and for his notes, memoirs, and hopefully uh, admittance into the Pathfinder Society in the future, wants this tale to be told, needs those heroes to succeed. However, the town just doesn't just produce heroes overnight. So I'm not saying the guy has to deal with sloppy seconds, but he tries to find people, the blacksmith, the barber, the candlestick maker, the baker, anybody that knows someone, strong farmhand, anyone willing to go with him. Finally, he would say he would not lead the expedition, but at least join it so he could find and document the fate. So now he believes I need several people to go in there and protect me. <laughs> At a loss, he starts by going to the archive, library, and church of Sarenray. Poring over books, talking to anyone that looks like they're studying alchemy, arcane, wizardry, start with a knowledge person. It's got to be some kind of wizard, somebody he can find. Perhaps even one of the priest acolytes that wish to make a name for themselves, that feel indebted to these heroes because the graveyard of their ancestors is a, on a cliff right above this very cathedral. And if the undead had managed to come down, they could have laid siege to this cathedral. This is the guilt trip that he plies to the high priest now. They decline, one and all, and a little bit downtrodden, he finds himself hanging out in the library, looking into some of the lore. Until one day, a voice catches his ear 
Someone leaves the door ajar, and he leaves the main library area to go to some of the sermon, the, sort of the mini chapels. And he follows a voice. Doesn't sound like the usual sermon of Saren Ray. He comes upon a small room, again, a door ajar, and peeks inside and sees a man practicing a sermon. There is no one in attendance here, but he has found a room that carries good acoustics and testing the sound, reverberance, and impact of his own voice. He sees what? Troy? Mr. Troy Phillips rejoins the cast. Now, Nargrim was not present during the capture. He is in town, but we will discuss what's happened to Nargrim a little later. Troy, would you mind describing your character? Sounds good. We have a male, about, you know, late 20s, early 30s, uh, about six foot tall, six foot one, medium build, 180 pounds. Uh, dressed mostly in like silky kind of flowy yellows with some adornments in black. The clothing is airy, almost revealing. Um, there's a chain around his neck with a wooden symbol, uh, three daggers, and the points are out like a triangle. Their points are like uh, one, two up and one down, so it's like a triangle. Um, there's a whip around his belt, and he's got a tattoo on his chest of a wasp, and uh, it's like a top-down view of a wasp on his chest. Uh, Shoulder-length black hair and uh, yellow beads uh, part one strand of a braid down the middle of the black of his hair. And his name is Kanoro Lagar. Okay. Um, Jargon gets a 9 on his society and a 21 on his religion. Or anything so symbolic besides your holy symbol? Anything that like marks you or denotes your dogma? Anything like uh, that? Clothing and the colors, especially the wasp. Um, they're all uh, pretty much symbols of the deity Calistria. Or Calistria, oh. the savored sting. You're talking about the goddess of lust and revenge. Lust, revenge, trickery, even secrets sometimes. Oh, okay. So, um, leaning in, he cocks an ear and listens to your sermon for a few moments before you notice him at the doorway. Perhaps even secretly catching notice of him out of your eye. Can I have a perception? Perception from just the main page here? Yep. Into the tower or regular? Uh, tower. All right. Might as well get you guys trained on doing that. Sounds good. A small figure, diminutive in height, spies on you from the doorway. Mm. How would you react? Would you continue said sermon? I would but just to, continue the sermon, yeah, talking okay. to the people, and okay. Do you, kind you, of, uh, did you indicate suddenly acknowledge that uh, you know all of my friends and my brothers here? We can all talk, and we can all look at what the gods have all told us about, even ones who are kind of just spying from the doorway. Or don't want to come in altogether, and that is fine by me. You can watch from any place, the gods will always see you. Uh, he turns a little shade of red and, and steps into. <laughs> um, sorry, father, uh, brother, um, your priestliness. I was just. I couldn't help be drawn by the impact of your voice. It's quite resonating. And he looks around the room, seeing if it's some kind of trick. Like he had a spell going, or, you know, is it just naturally you? My friend, I can tell you, uh, there's no tricks to the voice in here. It's all me. It's all my people. It's the powers that the gods give. And they can give them to you, too. We're all gods, and we're all friends here. And there's power for everybody. Come and join us. Sit. Have fun. Relish in the pleasures that my gods provide. All right, so he sits and takes in your sermon. Two hours hey. later. You know... <laughs> He's a rapt audience for two full hours, man, and then... <laughs> Less of more of a sermon and more of a talking and kind of drinking and very hedonistic kind of sermon, if you want to say. In a way that they're kind of more... Less preaching about how good things are and in, more in enjoying and how good things can be. Okay. Uh, besides the echoing sounds, though quiet, uh, of the library down the hall, he... Um, he politely, you know, one leg crossed, hands folded over an E, all eager, little gnome, eyebrows up. Now, I'm going to show you guys, I don't know if I can, I can actually see this or not, um, Jargon, uh, where's my sheet here, Mr. Whitmill, okay, um, is a typical gnome in the fact that he does have, you know, flashy presence. Uh, but he styles himself as human as he can. 
Okay. He has turned his long eyebrows down, possibly trimmed them. They're exceptionally long for a human, but they don't like stick up like antenna like a regular gnome. He sports a goatee, like the little mustachio and like soul patch like Errol Flynn. And he has epically big hair from the ears up. So he's got like a big wave that wraps around and the big overside wave, you know, kind of like a Elvis or a um, Rebel Rebel. What's his name? Oh, I just can't remember the name. Old, old screen star. Um, anyway. The Pompadour. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, he, his diminutive size, right? So it looks like a child playing grown-up. He's got a big, you know, salmon-colored, pinkish-red collar, you know, and the, and the big goatee and the big hair on this tiny little body and that kind of thing. Um, so it denotes him, obviously, as a gnome. Too flashy to, to probably be a halfling. But, like, you guys have seen gnomes with, like, blue hair and crazy like this guy actually has like a dark brown brassy you know not brassy is in like it's got a, the reddish sheen to it but you know dark brown hair and probably as far as gnomes go the plainest most human looking gnome you've ever seen until he opens his mouth and he has a very you know the tiny little voice and all the gestures and everything all classic gnome anyway um he starts clapping and then thinks twice about it uh oh sorry and um, does some sort of holy gesture that oh, <laughs> makes takes all your willpower to suck it up and not be offended because it's really wrong, <laughs> almost blasphemous, as he picks something random. Um, well, well said, um, Father. Your your eminence. Your um, no. what should I call you? Ken is fine. That's okay. Ken. Well, my name okay. is Kenoro, but oh, okay, all right. Sure. Um, well, I. Respect, respect is due. Can I call you Father Ken or Brother Ken? No, Brother Ken. In certain situations, normal Brother day Ken. conversation, Ken is fine. Uh, okay. He smiles and steps closer, like we just became friends. All right, Ken. Um, I have a proposal for you. I noticed that the clerics of Sarenre have have busied themselves and looked after this town, but. Obviously, you're here for the archive and have obviously traveled like myself from somewhere else, since I have noticed you're not from the donation of Sarenry itself. Well, that's correct. Good eyes on you, my sir. Ah, sit, please, make yourself comfortable, because I have a tale to tell. And he tries to use diplomacy and charm and a bit of a performance, and he tells you his written story. Um, somewhat, like, he's not a bad writer, but it does lean to sort of like a bard's tale for children as opposed to, you know, it's a lot a little embellished and flashy, right? Yep. Anyway, he tells you the tale of the events that you've heard recently. Now, you've come here, you've been here like four days, you know, and everyone's worried about what's going on on Gauntlet Hill. And you've decided to stick around and see, you know, if this, this lighthouse is going to shine and dead. And obviously your goddess has left you, like led you here for a reason. But so far, no action. Well, the gods work in mysterious ways, and perhaps through this little gnome, inviting you to join a search and rescue party expedition to find the heroes of Otari and reclaim them from the depths of Gauntlet. What do you say? Well, that sounds like something that would be right up my alley, my friend. Now, what kind of things were these adventurers looking for when we, they went missing? Well, they were trying to, they were hired by the local stargazer, uh, and apparently, <laughs> for once, she was right. Um, that thing lit up like a beacon in local, the night, this terrible turquoise stargazer. light, and awoke the dead. You don't mean Rin, do you? Yes. Ah, Rin and I go way back. I'll have to go speak with her about this. Maybe she has some insight for me. Uh, sure. He says a little nervously, ring, starts wringing his hands. Well, um, you think about it, and I'm assuming I can find you here. Uh, unless you want to come I'm with me, I'm recruiting. I will stay here for now, my friend, but when you find others, bring them back to me. We could discuss then. Ah, good. Good to have you on the team. And on my side, he says, mumbling to himself, and he walks out. The camera follows him, uh, but not before. As soon as he gets to the door, it follows him outside and past the window that Father Ken brother Ken might be and you just catch a glimpse of Ken doing something inside so as he uh, walks outside you can see uh, my character he kind of turns around grabs a symbol around his neck and 
kind of whispers just to himself that, Callistra, I think we have someone with information we can use. Maybe even double check the stuff we already have. And uh, leave it at that. Okay. The scene ends as you pull out as Hen returns to the archive for some extra research on something that brought him here in the first place. Camera whips back to our gnome. Chest out, confident. One in the bag. All right. Starts heading directly into town. Completely unaware as he travels from 18 on our map back into the middle of town that he's being followed. Closer and closer, this large figure looms behind him, but so happy in his day, striding at his full gnomish little speed, completely unaware and must actually be distracted, summoned, or tapped to turn around, unless you just wish to follow him. Welcome, Eric, to the cast. I'd like to say your last name, but I don't trust my... Solve. Solve, thank you. I always want to say Suave, Eric Suave. <laughs> That'd be mean. Uh, Eric Sove to our cast. Um, like Drew, like Joe, someone that I've been working with in the shadows for the past six months and finally made his debut in Outlaws of Elkenstar and is now here filling out the cast, replacing Spiegler. Now, when I said, well, I need somebody on the front line to replace Spiegler, I didn't think you'd actually make a half orc. <laughs> you were talking about other races, but not going to complain. So would you describe this half orc that is easily matching pace and gaining on my little gnomish bard, sir? Yes, absolutely. Even for a uh, half orc, Gregor is uh, re relatively large. He's just so shy of seven feet. Uh, definitely a warrior. Uh, that being said, uh, he does have um, uh, some type of like a duster, leather duster over type of over top of his scale mail. Okay. That, uh, uh, runes etched in it, so probably some type of magic user. There's a uh, a large two-handed flail at his uh, at his side. Okay. Multi-talented, possibly. Okay, we'll, we'll keep you mystery. We'll keep you mystery man for now. Uh, and I gotta say, like logging town, swamp nearby, weather, like having something raincoat ish is you know it's not make you stick out. You're on the ocean; it's cool enough that you know what I mean. Like you're not. Most adventures they always wear something garish or whatever, stick out like a sore thumb. Like you made it like your your mac coat with something weird. It's like no, dude. There's like people walking around with leathers and coats and you know capes and not just you know. Um, you'd see more of that captain's Mac coat than you would like a cape from fantasy around Otari anyway, because so the sailors and stuff. Closing on Jargon Whitmore. Dun, 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 How would you get the dude's attention? Um, I'd, uh, go to tap his shoulder and pardon me, little fellow. Okay. Uh, dude jumps right out of his skin. Right, um, but <laughs> he, he he jumps, turns, and before he lands, he sputters something in gnomish. His hands flailing innocently. Did you uh, actually do you speak gnomish? No. Gnomish. No. Okay. So uh, yeah, something to the tune of like you know, I thought it was not responsible for the incident you're about to describe. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I, what? Uh, what? <laughs> hear that uh, you're asking questions about Gauntlet. I uh, heard rumors that the lights are back on and thought I'd come to investigate myself. What, um, what do you know of the current situation? So you're not a bounty hunter? No, not at all. Oh, then this is your lucky day, my man. Why, I just came from... And he looks past you like, how did I not notice you? He looks all the way up, you know, and then looks at the building. It's like, how did I not notice? Like, I was, and he's doing the pointing. Like, I was just there. How did, how did I miss you? Okay. Hmm. Uh, right. So, um, walk with me and I will explain. Uh, so again, you know, in two short hours or less, out comes the book and he wanders you all through town in some jagged course and you hear the tale, you know, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a couple facts that aren't quite right there, my friend. I think, uh, 
I think you're exaggerating things more than you actually let on. That is not at all how things happened. Oh, yeah? I happen to witness several of these. Well, I wasn't on site, but I have witness accounts and interviewed each one of the heroes myself, I'll have you know. Okay, you're right. right. Okay, okay. The bit with the unicorn and, and the trapeze and, uh, I, you know, it was some artistic license, but, but you are interested. And if you're not, I, I met a priest that can vouch for this expedition. Maybe they'll fund it. No, I don't know. Um, I'm interested. You're joining me, aren't you? Why would I be interested? I'm going to investigate things. Oh, well, then, well, perhaps we should... Well, then... And then, like, this little light goes on. You're absolutely right. I happen to know a priest that's quite interested up at the, up at the archive there. Even possibly whispers more powerful than Saren Ray. But that would only make our numbers three. We must continue on a little bit more. Let's let's round out our numbers. I will help you. Lead on. Shoves you to party lead. Okay. It's now the Eric Sov show. So, half work, dude. <laughs> I get to be a support character. My job is done. Look at that. I did that with less than two characters. All right. I don't want to, I'm the NPC, man. I'm DM run. I shouldn't be leading you around with a carrot. Go. <laughs> and he turns to a blank page. All right. Pen. And. Hang on. I'm thinking. The tall, but not quite so menacing half orc contemplated our situation before, you know. <laughs> I think we head over to the garrison, see if there's any postings there. All right. If not, we get a room for the night, and we listen in the common room, see if we can attract any attention there. Okay. You guys head over to the garrison, which, just checking my map here. Of course, spit it out if you know it. Uh, where is the garrison? Number eight. Thank you. We find something peculiar about the postings. Okay? First, we think there's none. And then we see this small diminutive figure wearing sort of like... You want to call it a rain poncho, but it looks more like a ghillie suit. Like something a little bit more um, like throw on for the weather or throw on just to like, you know, not be seen. But because he's like out in the open... You know what I mean? Like, you could pull this cloak thing off of him and be like, Ah, it's the halfling, or ha-ha, boy, you should, you're too young to join the military, or like some kind of ha-ha, right? Anyway, this diminutive figure has taken every notice off the board, like all of them, and is shuffling them in a stack and is mumbling to himself like he's trying to sort out the reading, trying to figure out what they say. And like, well, they're obviously here for him. He's taking them all down, and now I will take my time to read. He's standing right in front of there, and he's like, but he's peeled them all off. Uh, let's see. No, no, that's not it. What? No. This one? No. Uh, no. Mm -mm. That's not going to work for me. Okay. Mm. Jargon rolls up on you and says, Excuse me, my uh, good fellow. Taps you on the shoulder. May we have a look at those? The uh, ones you're done uh, with? You, okay, well, once I'm done, I'll be sure. Whoa. You're, you're tall. Right back at you there, handsome. And then you turn, and we see your face. Would you please describe your character first? <laughs> I just figured I was talking to another halfling. And I'm like, hey there, good luck. Right. Guy turns around, and what do we see, dude? Yeah, you see a humanoid, uh, like, tree, tree frog called Gripply. Um, so he's got, like, aqua blue skin with uh, white highlights, uh, some red down near his uh, feet and kind of his uh, fingertips. Um, he has leather armor on, and you know how sometimes they have like those straps um, on the leather armor? They're just belts. He has like a couple of extra belts around his waist and a couple around his uh, diagonally around his shoulder. Okay. So you're like, you're wearing gear, but you're not dressed in actual clothes besides the over thing? Yeah. You don't have your like junk sticking out or anything, do you? Uh, no, he, he's got on like short shorts kind of thing, uh, but his, he has like mostly his feet and legs bare. Okay. Uh, so turning around this owl that he wears kind of covers the back of him, but you can, besides the sort of little red Robin hood, right? Little red riding hood and you turn around and 
you saw from the back, you just see red cloak. You turn around, you see the face and the front of the chest and all this gear, webbing and all this kind of thing. No pun intended. Webbing is actually like a bandolier, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, military style. Um, what do you have for weapons? Any obvious? Uh, I've got a short sword at my side. Okay. So seeing your frog-like face, okay, and possibly mistaking your coloring, all that bright coloring for something else, he leans in and he says, not that I don't appreciate another guy that's like brave enough to wear all that makeup, but I think it's a losing battle at this point, buddy. You might just want to scrub that off. Oh, makeup? I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, ah. apologies. I'm trying to find something through these papers, but I'm just not, I'm not finding anything good. Oh, allow me to translate for you. Anyway, he takes one, looks through it and says, I don't think you'd find this interesting. And then just subtly hands it to the half orc. Like, here's your chance, man. to start reading notifications. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you wouldn't like, he like puts it behind his back and holds it up so high. You see paper waving behind his head. Like, there's this, then there's a seven foot giant standing behind him. Like, take this here, read it. You know, that kind of thing. Half orc snatches it up, right? Anyway, this goes on for several minutes, which turns into several more minutes, which, you know, two hours later, we finally get this little dude through all of his papers and exasperated we just ask well sorry we couldn't be more help and then i look at the half orc like did we find anything that we want to know in these papers no yes no okay uh what exactly were you looking for me i'm looking for something that's just i don't know man like i i'm looking for the perfect plant or something i can sell to buy the perfect plant? You know? Well, uh, you just have like standard gear on you unless you have something rare or precious or some kind of log that goes through this town. What about services? Do you have any skills? Mm, most people wouldn't like my skills. I tend to just take whatever I want. Oh, say. Anyway, puts his arm around you and just kind of like, as if they're like, he just makes a shadowy corner, um, Gregor, just by like turning off frame with this little dude. And the stage whisper, he actually talks louder. He says, um, you wouldn't happen to be talking about the type of skills where if you just happen to bump up against somebody, you just accidentally find something in your hand and they don't even know it's gone. Hey, have you seen me in action? <laughs> I, I didn't do that. You wouldn't happen to be talking about the type of skills where, if concealed, a door is still quite visible to someone with, shall I say, stunning eyes like yourself? I see all. And you wouldn't happen to be the type of person that... I'll just cut to the, to the chase. Um, are you a rogue or thief or criminal for hire? You wouldn't happen to be part of the... And he makes flappy wings club. He goes, no, nah, I have stay under their bridge sometimes. That's fun. But I'm not a part of them. Well, knowing about them is half the battle. What do you think? Turns to, let me introduce you to our leader, Shove. <laughs> You're on half work. <laughs> uh, he'll, first of all, he'll take a step away a little bit. Just make sure we don't get bumped into each other. Okay. Um... Yeah, definitely could be handy. You, uh, conveniently looking for money as well. I think we can help out there. I personally like the fact you can't read. Is that Mountain talking? I... He's huge. Depends on your perspective. You're small to me. Looks good, doesn't he? And he doesn't even wear any makeup. That's a plus. Gentlemen, this board is a bust, but with our new companion and information that we might glean from a certain stargazer, I need to check up on a certain someone that I met at the... Well, we need to get our story straight with uh, with Rin. So, on to stargazing. He takes you guys to the market square with all the tents. We find Rin, the elven tiefling stargazer. You remember her? Book one, episode one, or two. She has a customer. 
Um, she is consoling him, telling him that it's like it's not his fault. He is who he is. The stars obviously led him here, and you know whatever things he may have done in the past. Obviously, he's been led here for a fresh start. You have not answered any of my questions. Oh, but I have. I have. You just need to decipher the message. Uh, Excuse me for a moment. Look at the chart. Again. She shoves paper towards you. Comes around the table. Joggin! What can I do for you? Ah, mistress! We're we're on the same level, I think. You just took my accent. I think I did. I, I, yeah, anyway, they, they have a little quick uh, secret handshake or whatever. Speaking Elvish for a minute. Introduces the three of you outside the tent. Anyway, she's like, fine, I'll be with you in a moment. You know, just wait outside. And then goes back to Corey Shazon returning to the show. This doesn't look like a dwarf I see in front of me. Would you please describe the gentleman that uh, she's um, working <laughs> helping 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 not working helping, helping. assisting helping. yeah helping uh, uh, attempting to coerce maybe yeah oh he looks familiar where have we seen him before <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen you're looking at uh, a humanoid like f- figure standing about five foot ten average weight dressed sort of nondescript somebody who would likely blend in with everybody who is around Long jacket, big Western style, maybe fedora like hat on his head, a uh, little bit of facial hair. Nothing really that stands out. No scars, no features, anything. Any, any big weapons or anything like that kind of denotes well, you? Well, that, 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 that might be the only thing that would stand out the uh, very large great axe that is strapped. Okay to his back. He's Otherwise, obviously an arms dealer. Okay. No problem. Oh, <laughs> oh, can no. Swing that? oh, you can swing that, can you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, I can actually swing this. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Um, she comes over, comes back to you. Now, she approaches you from the doorway and looks over your shoulder, and now she's looking at the star chart from your perceptives, and she says, oh, my. Oh my. Oh, this is unfortunate. Well, I was standing on the side of the table. I was I was looking at it all wrong, she says. Um, depending on your perspective, I guess, well, there's a lesson to be learned for both of us. Your actions of late are totally your fault. And you don't struggle with guilt or acceptance. As I thought before. No, no. You just simply are what you are. I don't judge, she says, but I would suggest gainful employment, your, shall we say, needs that you fill from time to time, will garner some unwanted attention here in Otari. Employment is the best recommendation I can make for you. Mercantile or otherwise. And she snatches up the scroll and, and, uh, Rolls it up and kind of like bops you on each shoulder like she's nutting you. Next! And in pile, <laughs> a gnome, a half work, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a walking cowl. <laughs> and a kid, you know. <laughs> and the most beautiful frog man you've ever seen in your life. I will sort of face her and, uh, you know, give her a look and uh, simply uh, nod my head. Okay. As you wish, madam. My journeys will take me elsewhere. Check the message boards. I think they were full this morning. <laughs> I'm just going to turn around. Okay. And walk past everyone who is walking in and okay. maybe pat the little guy on the shoulder on the way by. Hey. Uh, hey, hold up there. Uh, we were just at the message boards, and 
sorry, we were sort of next in line and me being sort of down, you know, at the height I am with the flat being open. Not eavesdropping, not eavesdropping. You know, you do have a very charismatic something, voice. Yes, <clears throat> voice. Uh, not scary at all. Uh, I could have noticed that, uh, that uh, Mistress offered you employment. Well, we happen to be looking for... Let me just cut to the chase. Can you use that thing? He points at your axe. I'm just going to sort of look down my nose and go, yes. And would you be willing to protect the smallest and weakest and most charming of the party? I mean, all of us with it, if we paid you? That would depend, good sir. If he paid you, points at the half work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I know him. I'll pay you. Sure you will, little guy. What are you, rogue? You a bar like no one trying? Okay, well, if he paid you. And what is it that we would be doing? Stick around, stick around. We got to talk to Ren here, and you want to be a part of this. And the oh. scene pulls out slowly, and uh, the last thing we see is a little frog face poke out the tent flap, and then just kind of close it tightly himself and secure it. And the feet, the the scene pulls out, and then pulls back in uh, a little while later. You know, sun moves, that kind of thing. This time, Rin is by herself, but not completely alone. She's tapping something on her desk, just amusing herself with its rhythm, and just waiting for something. And she starts counting down. Five, four, three, two. And before she gets to one, the tent flap opens in a big flourish. And in strides Ken. My darling, so happy to see you again. You're early. Well, I got back into town a couple days ago, and you know how I have to indulge in some of the bests, but you are the best, so I came here for you. Well, as much as I'd like you to make this a personal social call, I'm still on the clock. And I believe uh, we have a mutual acquaintance in the name of Mr. Whitmore. No, oh, the curious gnome fellow. <laughs> he seems interesting, to say the least. Uh, Might he... have some information that's useful. Well, so, I, belie I believe the gods wish to use him as a catalyst. I've seen it in the stars. Do you care to verify my prediction with your own skills? I'm sure we could have a way to uh, do that. Let me look and see what we can fix. All right, so... Uh, She's, uh, I've taken the Star Watcher background, which uh, ties into Rin. I've also got an ability here um, that allows me to uh, increase my roles on Star Treks called Astrology. Oh, sorry, on uh, Knowledge Checks. Increase your role on, on Star Trek? Sorry, on, on Knowledge Checks. It's Astrology. So basically, I, I, if I prepare after my daily preparations, I spend 10 minutes and I can get uh, three times a day. I can uh, roll a, a D8. And I, on a six, seven, or eight, I get a plus two bonus to my skill check. On a three, four, or five, I get a plus one. On a two, I get nothing. And on a one, I get a negative one. So that's one of my abilities I took. Okay. And I also have dubious knowledge, which comes with my uh, Star Watcher uh, background. So okay. I can roll for information. I can get good info, no info, or sometimes good and bad or bullshit. Okay. Let's have it. Do, give me those rolls, buddy. What I'll do is I'll roll the D8 first to see if I'm going to get any kind of advantage on there. I'll give it okay. a It's a 1, so I actually get a negative 1 to my check. Okay, so... And, uh, I'm rolling for dubious knowledge here, so what, what what are you going to go with, Jeff? What am I looking into here? Uh, so you're ver she's asking you to verify her work. So what she did is, like, she read the stars last night, she mm -hmm. made notes, right? And then she's yeah. brought them here to, uh, to look at her charts. You know what I mean? And, and I do she, have war astrology, so... Right, so that's what you want to roll, and she uses the charts to decipher the, what the stars mean, right? But it's a skill. It doesn't say, oh, if a star is, like, on this axis, and there's, like, a note there, you need this sort of skill of, like, you know, and that's where the sort of, you know, BS comes in. So, with a negative one, two? Because you're one? Because of a... one. Okay. A negative one, because I rolled a one. Okay, so... Roll a tower regular. No, uh, out loud, but put a negative one in your modifier in Fancy Grounds. Uh, okay, what I'm doing here. Give me the old lore check. Negative one. And the lore astrology. Yes, we sir. We rolled an 18, so that's a 
plus six, but minus one, so twenty-three. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, not on not on the money because like she, um, you know, oracles and the caravan and like uh, trusting the caravan, which is a group of gods. You know what I mean? To you, it's like getting the telephone call. They all contradict whatever. You get it from the source. You have one goddess. She whispers to you. You know, that kind of thing. Type of thing. Anyway, however, you check her math, as it were, and you don't know if it's right, but you don't see any errors. You know, you can't find anything like, oh, you were terribly wrong about this, or this is way off, which means something completely different, right? So leaving it in the gray of she could be right and you cannot prove her wrong right she just proudly stands back and waits for you to finish i must say rin you've done it again this looks fantastic i think everything you said here looks right but maybe we should use our little gnome friend to confirm that information i think he might be good for this so you think whitmore is the actual catalyst drawing a second wave talks nope. that there may be several waves against the gaunt light needed before we succeed now at first i thought she was they were talking about the you know the light itself but now i believe these waves defer to the stars of the ocean and waves of adventure that we must throw at them like star trek red shirts you know mm -hmm. death after death but i don't think the gods would be so grim so i don't know Twice, maybe? Be quite greedy, but... Three times a turn? I don't think we need to deal with all the bloodshed. Maybe there's other waves that they speak of that we can throw at this light. Well, I have also noticed that here, and she, she shows a little star thing, right? Mm -hmm. Has moved into the alignment of the swarm. And you being who you are and who you worship... I think that might strongly denote to you. Well, Rin, let me let you tell you one thing. I have a source, and uh, maybe this evening I'll go see what I can find from my source, and uh, I'll check back with you tomorrow. All right. But until then, why don't we just keep this between the two of us? Of course, and I'm not implying that you need to, shall we say, spearhead or lead this expedition, but accompanying it, I think, might make all the difference Oh, I've already talked to the gnome, and... How, whoop, was he a gnome? <laughs> I ask you this as Sure! <laughs> is he, I can't remember what he was. He's a... He's a was, he, was he a gnome? <laughs> I can't, can't remember. Ah, Sorry. your eyes are always uplifted to the stars, and you can't see what's right in front of you. <laughs> what, was, what was your character, Jeff? Was he... No, I want to make sure I'm calling him the right thing. He was, yeah, he was a he's, he's a gnome. Jargon Whitmore, the bard gnome. That's right, perfect. And he I doesn't say, wear I, any I, makeup. No, Got it. he does. <laughs> I dye my hair to look like a human. <laughs> That's why he's into, into makeup. Like, I wasn't trying to make fun of Drew. I was trying to make fun of the own character. Like, he dyes his hair. He tries to make himself look more human with cosmetics so that he blends and they trust him. He doesn't look like some little firefly or whatever, right? So then he goes, like, the way Drew described the, the tree frog with the bright stripes and colors, he's like, hey, my man, all right. <laughs> but I think he overdid it, right? <clears throat> yes, I'm a gnome. Nice. Obviously, I'm a gnome in disguise, you know. Well, what I was going to say is uh, the little gnome friend already came and spoke with me. He said he was putting together a party, and I said I would join if uh, I thought they were up to the challenge. Have they spoken with you yet? You know, what, what, one thing I got to kudos to Troy, like, obviously, most of our audience is podcast. If you watch the video, when he talks, this guy closes his eyes and has the biggest shit-eating grin. I love it. Like, whatever you do, this guy, guy just closes his eyes like he's always right. And the big grin when you talk, man, that's awesome. So I want everyone in the audience, podcasting audience, to picture that when this guy talks, because that's awesome. <clears throat> Sorry, your question. Um, I had said, uh, he already says, you, you said the gnome stopped by. Has he gathered a party? Has he found other friends that can accompany us? I believe he has that well in hand, but it might take you to sway them. Leave that to me. I have my charms. Too many people know the story of gnome's folly, I'm afraid. Not many would follow one into a dungeon, not less a bard that's just interested in a, what did he call it? Scoop? 
It might be more than just a scoop at hand. All right. I'll leave you to your... And she, like, takes two fingers and draws them from her jaw down the side of her neck to her collarbone source, shall we say? I pat the tattoo on my chest and uh, just say, leave it with me. I'll take care of it. So you have to go right away. I've got a few minutes if you've got time. Oh, I think our time together would be worth more than a few minutes. You walk over and you see me kind of close the tent up tight and okay. grab around the corner. And Not trying to be rude, but I'm like, I'm looking at this character and she's all ethereal and, you know, but she is a real, a real lady, you know, little tieflin frisky. And I'm thinking a guy that worships the goddess of lust and revenge knows some stuff. And it's been a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's kind of like show me, show me something. You know what I'm saying? You know? The whip might not just be a weapon. Yep, yep. Let's not just picture Jeff in a red dress with horns and elf ears and Troy with a big smile. No, we don't want to picture that. No, but these two characters, you know, they're yeah. paying yeah. for the, yeah, paying for the, Yeah. Oh God, we went there. My eyes. Burn. Tomorrow could not come soon enough. Bing. Sun's up. All right, let's jump to tomorrow. That night. Um. Your prayers to Callistra. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask what she said. I'm not going to tell you what she said as the GM. But I'm going to assume one way or the other that um, the gnome, as requested by you, drags these three schmoes up the hill to the cathedral and uses his name and connections and maybe money to get all of them inside and takes them to the little sabbatical corner where you like to practice. And when you head in there, right after your prayer to practice, there are the gnome front and center, and behind them are three of the most unusual Montley crew you've ever seen in your life. There's a, at first you think there's two, because the orc is so big. And it's not the little guy beside the gnome that does not stand out. It's the nondescript guy that just blends. Well, I must say, my little friend, Pleasures come in all shapes and sizes, but you have brought a menagerie with you. Allow me to introduce for your recruitment pleather. Pleather? Pleasure. Sorry, I'm also... I'm just testing the acoustics myself. A bit of a Freudian slip, my friend. Gregor, the mighty Gregor, the mercenary Gregor, the interesting skill set, possibly arcane, that I haven't dabbled into yet. I'm sure he'll tell you more on the resume. And Dubsy... The man who could acquire anything, even with that face. And then, oh shit, I forgot you were here. Pokes the guy that's got his head down with a hat. What's your name again? I think he fell asleep. Pokes him again. Hey, Giz. Jizz. Goes. Gauze, that was it. Gauze. Yes. Okay. What's your name again? You. You call me Merrimage. Merrimage. Right. Anyway. Brave soul. Despite their, their looks and unusual skill set and large weapons that, you know, make them even braver and hopefully can protect me, um, are willing to escort me and follow you um, into the gauntlet. Unless, of course, you know, any points at the half arc, you guys want to kind of like, you know, um, rock, paper, wizard, Spock, and, you know, make a decision that way. Who leads us? I personally nominate, and he slaps the frog, Dubsy, for leader. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Ah. Uh... No, that, no. That is not a sign of confidence, my friend. They do the Look two of them, do, they do the lean in thing again. It's like, come on, man, we talked about this. <laughs> it's your big moment to shine. I believe in you. So what you mismatched bunch of something or other are looking for is someone to take you into battle. 
you notice that like in between the pauses, you guys can hear the gnome muttering to himself. He's like recording what we say and the dialogue isn't exact. He's like mismatched brave souls. <laughs> blah blah <laughs> like never like, any like any insult going to his person of the group he just flips it <laughs> and and, it, and it, whenever there's like dead air or whatever you guys just hear the scritch 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 of him writing down like little quotes to you guys like brave as he looked at us menacingly and you know dared us to be calling ourselves anything other than brave souls yeah, that kind of thing well my gnome friend here said he was looking for a party to check out what was going on with the light, so whoever wants to lead us, by all means, I'll follow. Technically, I a rescue know. expedition. Technically. He goes back to his page. My gnome friend, you're not following with us? You'd make an excellent leader of this troop. Oh, oh you. Uh, no. Now, I can provide funding. The mayor has offered a reward... 25 gold each person that we return for every hero that we return unharmed you know I mean not dead we can't drag their bodies out because then the cost of resurrection kind of co covers our reward so if we can bring them back alive and they'll heal them up and send them back and our job is done and I'm offering you an opportunity by the mayor's assistance financially and such, such whatnot of a lifetime a short story if you will Especially if this cast wants to go back to the original characters. I remain the same. So, let me understand here, my little friend. I count four. That would be 100. If everybody's alive. 100 to split. 150 to split. No matter uh, how many. No he matter only what. offered me 100. I mean, 25 a person. And I took it. So... Insight check. Can we do an insight check on that? An insight? This is not fifth like, edition. Fuck off. Check it. Check it. Check if he's lying. I don't know if he's lying. <laughs> I'm about to spell to check if he's lying there. Perception. Perception. All right. Sounds good. Insight. Perception. Insight. Yeah. Okay. In the tower. Do you, I don't. Again. It, no. No. Okay. Oof. Thirteen. Who got the one? Oh, I guess these would have to go oh. to the tower because, like, if you roll crappy, then you know you don't know, and if you roll high, so yeah, let's sorry, let's have. But hey, a chance to beat thirteen. Throw them in the tower, guys. Perceptions. I gotta remember how to do that. Okay. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay, uh, let's start with. You should see when we sit at his house and drink. When does that ever happen? Oh, never. Never. A couple <laughs> times. <laughs> never. <laughs> He's hoping it will. Um, starting with Gregor. Okay. You overheard the gnome trying to recruit the priest. So as far as you can perceive, you know, this is all in the up and up. And the fact that he, for five minutes... You know, offered leadership to you and now has turned to Dubsy. A little embarrassing, but, you know, as far as the money's good, as far as you know, he sounds like he's on the up and up. Um, Dubsy? Yeah? I mean, uh, he actually showed you a little writ from the, signed by the mayor. You know, 25, like, like, it might be something that was on the message board that he took down before anyone saw it, and he's walking around with it. <laughs> trying to recruit himself this is my job this is my chance you know before anyone sees like you know, tomorrow there might be a new one going hey who took the you know kind of thing um ken oh dude's full of shit but the money's probably good like dude's obviously got an ulterior motive he says it's his book but layers lots of layers to this guy um but as far as like trusting is is like he'll take it to the mayor and the mayor should be good for the money. I mean, even if they're not, you guys should be able to force the mayor's hand with the heroes. Like you bring heroes back, you parade them around like you've done this crap, right? You don't take them to the mayor. You take the people, you take the heroes to the people. You get them all wound up. Then you go to the mayor and you go, hey, see that crowd out there? Pay us. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's that, guys? 150? Yeah, the price went up. Oh, these guys are really banged up. I don't think they're going to survive this ah! trip over the cliff. Now you have three heroes. Pay up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how dark this campaign is going to go. Anyway, 
Um, hmm. So, so what's the truth? Oh, anyway, so Ken, <laughs> after your paramour twist with um, Rin last night, this is what she predicted: they will doubt the gnome. The money is good from the mayor, and things could get really dark really fast. So, like my little joke here is actually in line with, like, <laughs> with <laughs> what her predictions of like this isn't like the last party. They might only be good for like barely getting those guys out alive, and then we're really gonna put our trust back in the heroes. <laughs> We shall see. Sounds good. Uh, so, and guys, yeah, he's uh, he seems on the level. Oh, so the one fifty? No, no, like the, the the fact that he actually is backed by twenty five gold pieces of you know. All right, so are we gonna settle for a hundred, or are we gonna try and push push GM Jeff here for a little more? Huh? Depends on how you go about it. I will tell you this though: once you bring the heroes back, right, you need to show a hero twenty five ahead, right. If you come back and start like doing shit like we have your heroes, they're in a warehouse, <laughs> they're in a black ops location, pay us more. That's called extortion and you'll find the garrison on your ass. You know, you'll be arrested and, you know, probably he wasn't lying. You know, no one went back to feed the heroes and they perished. They just arrested you for bullshit. <laughs> like, this could all go sideways. So, like, this is good. You may hold all the cards or depending on how you play them, you could screw yourself really fast. Anyway. But I've expected this of Corey because he's done it in my campaigns four. We're up to four times now, dude. You get predictable. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> as I was saying, the money's good, gentlemen. What do you think? Uh, I prefer to be in the back. Leaders, they go down with the ship. That's that's not me. We're going to a swamp, not out to the ocean. So you should be fine. Come on, man. We Arts talked about this. Sink and swamps. <laughs> he stubs you aside again, leaving the three of you to decide who the real leader is. Come on, man. Like, I got you. I got you. Like, you're the guy. You're the guy. Aren't you the frog guy, Dubsy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, what do you worry no, about? Sorry, go ahead. What do you worry about the water? Water? Was, I don't care about water. I just don't want to sink with this uh, ship. I, you know, things go in trouble. I, I get out of there. All this no offense. Picking the leadership that we should be following into this swamp, my friends. Let's find out some things from about you. About you, who has skills to fight? Who here would want to head on into the fight, and lead us there, and attack firsthand? Ooh, front line. He pulls out a playbook, starts making X's and O's, and looking at you at all expectingly. Who's our front line? Looks at Gauze with a giant axe. I don't know when this turned into a rescue mission. I thought this was an exploration mission. We're here to investigate the lights that are apparently going off. We need to see that the uh, actions that the Rose Guard took 500 years ago are still uh, valid, that there's no there's no other activities or arcane sources inside the tower. So that's what we're here for. Sure, sure. If you want to be the next hero and go down in there and come out with a whole bunch of treasure and maybe be dead, I'm just saying... I'm along for the short ride where if we save those dudes, bring them back, we get paid, Mayor patches them up. You guys want to go back in after that? Fine. But he will pay to know their fate and proof of it. It's a little bonus. You guys want to stay? I'll hang out at the entrance. And they've gone where the light is anyways, so yeah. we can find information while looking for them. My big friend, we should be okay in your search. I mean, one mission could lead into another, but taking on the hero's mission I don't know I mean you guys have never worked together and I've never worked with you it's you know maybe we should try the short stick first you know get paid a little short story from my memoirs you know and I'm not one to lead here my friends I like to stay back the pleasures of the flesh they can they can take their toll on my people and I like to help them recover from those so maybe leave me back behind with you but not leading not you sure, Ken? Way. You were my second choice. As long as it's not this guy. He points at 150. My friend, trust me when I say I don't lead a group. I fall. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to draw my axe. Yeah. Just nonchalantly twirl it around. Set it very hard. Butt down on the on the floor and run my, my thumb down. Across the blade. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, you need somebody to do this? Are you willing to follow? 
Are you offering to be like the entire front line? All I the mean, rest I, of these guys are, are, are all shorter than I am. Is that right? Uh, not the seven foot tall half orc. Ah, he's he's actually tired. taller than you. <laughs> I'll be behind you, meat shield. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? What if we sort it out on the way? Because I think this guy, and he points at the half orc, who's just grinding his teeth at this point, who said nothing. It, you know, we should clear that. Like, let's go for a walk. Let's, let's We'll discuss it on the way. You know, <laughs> Let's go. I don't think we're getting anywhere. Uh, I suppose that we can do these things. We still need to sort out this cash. Here. He pulls out the mayor's writ that he showed Dubsy earlier. I didn't want to show this. I thought you could take me at my word, but if you really need to know... Here, look. Anyway, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it looks like one of the notices that were posted, you know, or should still be there, he took it um, on the wall, you know, reward recovery of, you know, f our four heroes or, you know, proof of their demise, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you bring them back alive, you get 25. Hmm. Each. You bring back p proof they're all dead, you get 25. He assumes each, but that's not how it reads. I wasn't lying. I just misunderstood the nest message. We can probably negotiate that later. Sure. Hey, you know, if we could, like, maybe throw in a round of healing, I could actually, I know a little soothing word myself. If we bring him back in top condition, I'll even help you barter for a couple extra gold. Couldn't hurt. Might even, any finger guns the half-orc? Our next expedition, eh? To go deeper. Without me. So... Forward, man! You know, he's like making such a ruckus, like a high priest, sorry, a priest of Cal of Calistra. <clears throat> You're making converts here, damn it, Ken. A priest <laughs> of Sarenray comes by and asks you to keep it down. There are those researching quietly in the archives, and there are those are prayer, and you guys are getting pretty rowdy in this little room. Sorry, your eminence, sorry. Sorry. Well, we'll take it outside. Come, let's go to, let's go to town. Share a meal, tell our tales, learn our character classes, our backstories, our life stories. I'll read it, I'll write it all down so the audience doesn't have to suffer them up front. Because who knows how long you guys are going to live. And re gear, re equip, and all of that. Sound good? I think that's the best start of a plan we've had all day. Awesome. Very well, gentlemen. It's off. On adventure we go. Sure. I'd like to palm an object while we leave, though. Everyone's distracted. <laughs> Off of one of these guys or just like something that belongs to the... Just a book or something. Yeah, Doesn't sure. have to be anything important. A candle. A little candle opera or something. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> You get a piece of garbage off the floor. No, it's like we're all we're all going that type of thing, right? We're headed for the door, and there's just like that proverbial Gideon Bible in the corner that like Ken was using, but leaves here because it belongs to Saren. Right? And he just goes over and little little suction cup fingers just bloop right off the shelf, right in front of us. Do, 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 do. Um, um, making a thievery roll goes against a base perception dc this is not like first edition where everyone around like makes perception rolls and goes versus your roll it's like if you're the guy rolling everyone has that static dc based on their level so with a 12 i'm pretty sure everybody you know so you just take the, you know take the saren ray bible that's good reading good toilet paper or good firewood who knows you know it's many uses you make little paper throwing stars he's a ninja anyway a little later the scene comes back down to downtown and you guys are you know equipping spending money and i will spare the audience the ever scrolling list and using the magic of editing so later on that evening after you guys have spent your day shopping getting together still arguing who's going to do what uh whitmore does his utmost for you guys not to go marching up the back of the hill and pester the, the mayor you know because from his perspective his argument is, guys, he just posted this. He's not going to, like, say yes for the first schmo that ripped it off the board, run up and going, this isn't enough. That's 25 gold. That's 250 silver per guy. And 
we get to be known as the guys that brought the heroes back. It's like all the fame they have with hardly any of the work. You know what I mean? Anyway. And he, he'll spend his day, you know, trying to convince you of this. Anyway, day goes by and you guys have done your shopping, you know, and spent your money and got your gear. And we'll get into that later. Late, late that night. One of this party leaves town one of this party goes to a secret spot and digs up a chest waterproofed retrieves something from it sits down and spends half the night studying it and then puts it back reburies it and returns to town where they should be before the dawn and we will see you all next time I'm telling you right now big guy he's not going to budge on that money 100 gold's a good deal <laughs> it's a good deal man I'm telling you it's solid now you want to go does he have a maximum of how many heroes we bring back? Because I'm thinking we get one, we change him up, you know, makeup, hairdress, we bring him back, hero number two. Do it again, hero number three. Well, I know if I, I don't, you know, you might be onto something there. And he, again, he pulls him in. <laughs> we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. Good night, everybody.